Namaskar. Welcome to the last session on establish a healthy foundation. Today we're going to do all the poses on the floor, um, a few uh, floor poses, and also massage. I'm going to include the massage uh, part in this in this session. Let's see. Let's do a little bit of warm up. Mm, what shall we do? Let's sit in this pose. Probably have the left leg over. Okay, and let's do a little bit of side twisting to get into the well, movement on it uh, movement with it because the pose is going to be just bending forward and backward so the side bending would be very useful to have the overall effect let's lift up the right arm and go down to the left side it doesn't matter you go all the way down or not it's just having to feel that movement in the fascia anyway Oh, she's always moving. And in evening. Exhaling to the other side. Go to one more time, exhaling to the other side. And this time I want you to look up to your fingers, moving the neck. And looking down, giving the stretch to the neck. Back. And straight. And go down and inhaling up, pushing yourself up, lengthening, and then to the other side. Looking up. And looking down. Back, center, and pushing yourself, lifting up. Down. By the way, if the leg is not going to go one on top of the other, you can also just put in the cross shoelace position. It's perfectly fine. You may need support. I forgot to mention, do have some support on your knees, legs, however you need it. Please uh, do not be shy. Feel free to use any support you need, blankets or blocks. Okay, now you change leg. Left under, right over, it can be here, it can be here, it can even be just here. Then, we're going to do again, we can do right side first, inhaling, exhaling to the right. Turn the head up, stretch your neck, you get, you give a dip, stretch the neck, because it's going to be quite powerful for the neck, the uh, floor poses. And down to the floor. And then back to the center. Push yourself, go down and come up, pushing yourself up. Lifting, standing away from the pelvic, giving some space, and exiting to the other side. Looking at your fingers, the palm on top. And below. Back to the center. And inhaling, push yourself up. Do lengthening and exhaling. Releasing. You have some stretch on your legs and also on your arms. Really, it's very nice. Inhale, exhaling, turn to one side. And if you like, you can continue to turn back. Look over your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
and then back to the back to the center, back to the right, and lifting. Again, inhale, exhaling, turn to the other side. Don't push yourself too much. Stay in that. You don't have to over or go beyond the limit. And then look over to the right side, over your right shoulder if you need to, if you can do that. Stretching the neck. Shoulders are not tense. And inhaling, pausing to the left and back to the center. Let's change leg. We didn't do the twist. Let's do the twist with the left leg now on top. Again, this time we're going to do left side. This time it's a left twist. Look over your left side. And over left shoulder. And slowly release, back to the right, to the center. Then again, inhaling, exhaling, twist, right. And looking over the right shoulder. Stretching your eyes. Don't forget to stretch the eyes. It's really nice to give some exercises to the eyes. And inhaling slowly, gradually, back to the left and to the center. And release. Legs. We're going to do some butterfly. It's really nice to do butterfly pose. Just bring yourself forward. You can keep your back straight if you need to hunch. It's perfectly fine. And get your abs. Forward. Stay forward, you can massage like this. If you find come comfortable to keep the legs up, you could have some support. But uh, if it's up here, you could put some support. Otherwise, just leave it. You can go further, it could go nearer to you, further from you. Up. Cool. We are going to lie down. Give the right leg up. Left leg up. Both legs up. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Twist to one side. Drop the knees to the right. Inhaling back center. Exhaling to the left. It's going to be brace. It's not. I'm not staying in the pose for a long time. And in the back center. Exhaling. Inhaling. I'm going to do a little bit of bridge because uh, we got, there's going to be a wheel pose. So this will help in preparation for the bridge, uh, for the wheel pose. Bring the, um, the heels. Close to your bum and lift off this spine off the floor. 
watch the knees until his fingers under collapse the palms together if it is possible and slowly as you find the strain on the knees lower spine vertebrae at the time very slowly take the time to come down straighten the legs you do again if you like you could also take a block put it in between the knees As you go up, squeeze the block and lifting the spine off the floor. Interlace the fingers, bring the finger up, palms, collapse the palms. Very slowly. Lowering the body down, straighten the legs one at a time. Run it slightly away, this way. One more time, lifting, squeezing together, lifting. Spine of the floor. Clips the fingertips. Interlace the fingers. Claps the palms. And slowly lower spine of the floor very gradually. Release, block, turn the head side to side, rotating the arms, change direction, stay for Let's start now with the uh, two poses, the poses we're going to do today, Halasana. We're going to do a variation of uh, the Halasana. They are called Halasana, Shivasana and Tejasana. Each of them has a different way of putting your, your arms and your palms. So, but you can choose the one that you, are, you feel comfortable with. Now, the pose is done lying down, so I'm going to explain a few things before I get into the pose. Now, in the lying down position, um, the do not move when you are talking. And uh, remove any chain first before you get into that position. So it's easy, it doesn't hurt your neck when you are in that halasana position. It's a plow position. Um, and you ought to, now there are three ways, three different poses I'm going to do. One, with the, with the arms just by the side, and the legs are on the floor. You can put a block so you, to support your feet, or you could put something higher, like a table or a chair, that will help support your feet, so it's not hanging there. Um, at the same time, you can support your hip if it's difficult to bring it all the way up. And okay, another thing is you may want to have a blanket on the upper part of the body. Make sure that it's not just the neck, it's the entire part of the body. Okay, so it goes like this. 
so it's easier, it's more comfortable for you to lie down. So the neck is not on the, on the hard, firm floor. Um, so Halasana, the arms are down. There is one pose, Shivasana, where the, you collapse the palms together. Okay, and straight, because it gives that extra stretch to the, to the upper part of the body. And the third one, Tejasana, where the hands are just by the back of the legs. It could be here, any part of the legs. You will see as we do it. Now, I'm going to remove this. Let's do. So we could do Halasana three rounds, up to five minutes or less. Same with Tejasana, with tejasana two minutes, three rounds. We'll do, we'll, um, we'll do two minutes this time. And uh, Shivasana, we could do again up to five minutes, three rounds or less. But we're going to do two minutes. Let's get down. So do not talk when you're in that position because it hurts your throat and your vocal cord. And okay, legs together. Palms by the side, halasana pose. If you find any sharp pain, just move out of it and get back into it. Your chin chest may be very compressed or it may not be. It may be just relaxed depending what comfortable position you are assuming. And slowly release the pose. If you need to bend the knees, bend the knees and lower the legs. You could do one at a time or together. We need to shake the neck side to side. So release the tension in the back of the neck. Let's pause for a while before we continue with the next round. Next, we'll do one more time. 
But instead of the plow, we're going to do Shivasana, uh, which is almost the same as uh, plow, only thing that legs, the knees are bent and they are bent towards the floor or towards your ears. But if you find that Halasana is better for you, just assume that Halasana pose. Let's put the legs together. Lifting up. The, this one, the fingers are collapsed together. Into this and lower the legs, the knees to the floor and next to your ears, the shoulders. If you find pins and needles, release it and bring back again. Again, arms, pins and needles, you may release it and bring back again. And slowly release. We did about two minutes. Release the pause. Again, if you do not do the Shavasana, Halasana is perfectly fine. In fact, you can continue with the same pose, Halasana, three times. I'm going to do one more time. Last round. Next together. Now, I want to show Tejasana. Tejasana is an uh, energy pose. Now, hands can be placed any part of your, the back of the legs. So, if you don't feel nice in this, you don't need the extra energy, you could do halasana, palms by the side, or claps in the shavasana, the legs bend, or now tejasana. Stay, we're going to stay for two minutes. In this pose, uh, two minutes is the maximum, I mean, more than enough.
slowly release. Turn the head side to side. These poses are very powerful, so especially if you have neck issues, you should avoid this poses. They are contraindicated, contraindication. Otherwise, I find it such a relief for the neck tension, shoulders and neck tension. Next, we are going to do a very powerful pose. It's called Chakrasana. Now, Chakrasana is a wheel pose. It is actually very good for kids. Um, however, um, it's also good for, for adults to do. <laughs> uh, so let's try how to do it. Um, if it's difficult, you could do the uh, bridge pose, which we, we did earlier on. Otherwise, we could do gradually. Now, the hardest part is to lift the head off the floor because, um, you know, it's the heaviest part of the body. The head is actually the heaviest part of the body. You may, um, I don't know if you could use a block for this. Now, this is how I would go into the chakrasana. It may be different from for everyone. Now, I put my legs, my knees together so I could support to get it up. For some, because I don't want to impose so much strain on the knees. It can be very straining on the knees, especially if you know the muscles, uh, the calf or the back, it's tight. Uh, otherwise, so let's get into it very carefully. You use your breath to breathe in and out of the pose, so that it helps you to get into the position. Wheel is a is a round. You're using the help of your arms to support yourself to lift the head off the floor. So if you like, you could just try just lifting to see if it's possible. It, it takes a lot of tension on the neck. You could also do this to release the tension on your lower back before you get into the pose. Okay, let's get ready. Knees together. Later, we'll adjust the legs together. The, actually, it doesn't matter. You may adjust it back or not, but uh, to get into the pose, there are a lot of variations that may support you to get into the pose. Knees together. Breathing out and breathe in. You see, you can be straining on the knee. I put my legs, my feet together. So you know the head and then the body. Like I said, it's a powerful pose. Um, it's quite easy for kids to get into it. For adults, we may have forgotten how heavy our head, our body is. So you may take time to adjust to the position. If that is trying, you could do cobra pose in order to counter um, the counter pose is cobra you could do the the uh, 
bujangga senapus. Just pause for a while. We'll do one more and then we'll do the cobra so that you know this uh, asana is actually nice to uh, counter effect with the uh, counter pose with the cobra. Because it's backward bending ex extension, hyper extension. One more time, knees together. Watch your knee if you have dodgy knee. I do have a little bit of condition with my knee, but uh, so you need to watch it very carefully when you do it because when the hardest part is when you're lifting the body off the floor. Take breathing in, breathing out, whichever you need to. Some of us breathe in to go up or breathe out to go out. It has some uh, different for some people. Breathe in as you go up, I breathe out. And slowly, the head and the body. Otherwise, you could do the, the wheel for four rounds if you are up to it. Otherwise, we could just do the cobra pose for the counter pose effect. Let's try so you could see the same effects you get in, um, or even the, the wheel, the uh, boat pose. I'm going to do a bit of cobra just to feel the in fact, for those who didn't do the uh, wheel pose, just breathe it in. I'm just going to do four rounds of this. This could also be a nice warm up for the wheel pose. Let's finish up with massage and shavasana if that's the end of your practice. So, it would be nice to do shavasana just before you come out of the pose. Um, so, what poses did we do today? We did halasana and a variation of um, and I showed Tejasana and Shivasana. They all have the lying down position, with the legs lift uh, over uh, inverted pose in a way. And um, Chakrasana, or if you cannot do Chakrasana, you could do the boat pose or the cobra pose. That helps also with the same effects of backward bending. Now I'm going to do one more pose. This is what you can practice, a balancing pose. Okay? And we'll finish up with massage and shavasana if this is the last one.
balance lift your left leg down if you can just go into this balance pose it's really nice to practice some balancing pose just stand in this pose if that's how you find uh, that's what you could do otherwise lift the right leg off the floor place it on the left knee now the, the fingers are on the floor supporting you you can what you can do is also now if you're comfortable stay otherwise you could lift <laughs> otherwise if you're not comfortable lift the left arm up and balance stay focused at one point And slowly release. This is a really nice pose to massage your toes, massage your brain, your mind, your brain actually gives you very good memory. This pose is called Gyanasana, knowledge pose. Now we're going to do the other side as you have guessed. Keep balance. If not, if you can, take off the left leg this time. Lift your fingers down and lift the right arm up if it's possible. It's very really nice. And slowly lower the right arm down. You can feel the blood flow to your fingertips. You may come out of the position for a while. You can do this four times. You're going to try again. Left side. Right leg up. Ready? Left arm up. Okay, that's good. Next one, the other side. Right leg down, left leg up, and right arm up. And slowly release. Go. Are you ready for another round? Let's do one last round. You can do up to four. Let's do one last round. And release side. It really massages your toes very much, so it can be quite painful to stay in this pose. So you can do shorter, shorter time. We did about 30 seconds each side, so you could do less than that if you need to. There it goes. Just sit for a while to feel the effects on the mind, on the body, on the entire being, or even in Shavasana. Now, 
the last pose, Gyanasana, is very good for memory. Do it especially before an examination or something you have to memorize or study. Um, it's very useful for that. Um, it's up to four rounds. Of course, you can do less than that. So try these new asanas that you have learned today and you can combine them with the other asanas as well. Um, but uh, finish up uh, with the necessary uh, practice before you end the session. We are going to do massage today. So I'm going to show you how the massage mm -hmm. is done uh, before Shavasana. Let's uh, put the palms together. Let's palm the eyes. And I'm going to continue with the head, just from the front to the back. In case your palms are cold, and it creates some friction and warmth before you massage. The forehead is not necessary, but it's nice to just, you know, soothe the forehead with your index fingers. And here, just where your eyebrow is, and below your eyebrow, there are, not, there are nerves, it's called the vagus nerve. So massaging the area actually really very, it's very calming, very soothing. Now another thing is we are not just massaging the nervous system, but we I mean the the nerves, but we are also um, most important massaging the oils, okay, that has been secreted by the body. So it does not matter going whichever way. Okay, these are these are the vagal nerves that are vaguely there, so we're just soothing the massaging those areas. Okay, front of the ears, back of the ears. Now, here, three times, could use this way. And thumbs, and the, the, also massaging the limb nodes where the limb nodes were encouraging the lymph flow. So that's why I'm massaging, stimulating, mobilizing the limbs. The ears, they are at pressure points, or you could cross your hands. I like to cross my hands, and these contralateral movements are really useful for the brain. So I like to cross them. And the neck, we'll continue with the neck, all the way to the back. I do an extra massage on the neck just to give a little bit of release on the tension. Let me just take this off so it's not noisy. And then um, the arms, the left side. Now, again, at home, you're not wearing um, a lot of clothes covering, so it's good to massage the secretion of your. Uh, uh, sweat plus the oil back into the skin. That's when you and that's the third part about massaging. It helps to make skin smooth and supple, so you're not wasting this. Uh, it also it's a balm for the skin. So you're massaging all this back into the skin. The armpit area is very important. They are the nodes, okay, stimulating them. Shoulders, bicep, tricep, upper part of the arm, the elbow and the flow of the hair all the way down to the fingertips. The, the endings, there are a lot of nerve endings at the end of your palms. So you are just massaging them slowly. You are not causing a lot of pain, but of course there is like kind of a achy kind of a uh, feeling while you are massaging because of all the knots uh, of the fascia. <laughs> All over the body now the right side. You can massage the shoulders, the armpits, the limb nodes are there. Massaging the oil balm, the balm for the skin, elbow, flow of the hair.
these are acupressure points I'm pressing a little bit more so but uh, do be aware have enough knowledge before you press any acupressure points then the chest there are limb nodes here so you just slowly pressing um, just giving some movement to the limb nodes in the chest area abdomen then uh, you want to squeeze from the center to the side Just under the rib cage, all the way to the hip, and then there's a uh, mudra we call Agni Saramun. Agni means fire. You're pressing the just the middle finger next to the navel. First, you breathe in, and then you breathe out, pressing towards the spine. Now you don't want to do this in a full stomach with a full stomach, of course. So uh, during asanas, especially in the morning when you have not eaten yet, it's easier to do it. Just to stimulate the digestive system, your elimination system. You can do it three times. You can do three. And release. Now the spine, let me turn around. Just soothing spine you can do this way just to symmetrize the movement and between the spine if you like if you can reach sometimes i make a face just to run massage and the side of the spine is just a massage actually and even out the oil then we'll go into the left leg extend the left leg now there are, there are inguinal nodes up here where the thigh meets the body the torso so they are just squeezing they're squeezing this area you're not just rubbing you're squeezing this area pumping so stimulating the limb nodes and then your thigh, just no matter how you go it this way, that that you start bring the oil back into the skin. Okay, the are thigh. Then the knee, just go round the knee. You could do this way. You could just apply pressure around the kneecap. And the back of the knee. There are also limb nodes in the calf. You can massage. You want to massage the skin, actually. So the the, the secretion is a balm to the skin. That's why you find the skin soften after some time when you do this practice regularly. And upper part, top of the foot, each, each toe. You may want to put the fingers between the toes if you like. And maybe the base of the toes with your tip of your fingers or your thumb. Tip of your fingers. So if your fingernails are short, you could just press it into the base of the toes. It's also good to keep your fingernails short, actually. <laughs> Besides being able to massage your feet. Okay, I'm just going down with my finger, my, my thumbs down. You could use your knuckles if you like. You could use elbow if you like to just go into it. You don't want to create so much pain, but sometimes it's really nice to have that release of this tension, you know, when you're doing this massage. It's so nice. It can be a little bit painful, <laughs> painful, but it's um, so it releases a lot of tension. You could use knuckles. So, the feet and the palms are the map of the body, so you want to. Um, Massage the feet. This is the heart, very hard, so you can use the, just your feet. Okay, so finish with the left leg, now the right side. Right again, don't forget the pumping action on top of your connection where the torso meets the thigh. Pumping action, then massage the thigh. 
the knee, kneecap, kneecap, the, the pressure around the kneecap, just lightly. It's really nice to massage the kneecap, believe me. It's just nice of light pressure around the kneecap. Good. On top of the cap, back of the knee. Now you can massage the skin of your calf, shin. It's really nice to massage that. Ankles, go round, top of the foot, each toe. There are a lot of pressure points. Fingers, spread the fingers, between your, between your toes. That can be quite painful for in some cases, especially the nerves are touching your thumbs, massaging each base of the toe, putting the fingertips at the base of the toes, pressing a little bit. This is the map of the body, so you can feel some aches and pains in certain parts of the tissues, which may relate to the organs. Just some stagnation sometimes will cause a bit more painful than other areas, especially the shoulders. Use elbow if you like, which is not necessary. Okay, you can choose which one you want to use and make a fist and fist your heel. So, we're done. I'm going to do very short Shavasana, just one minute. Before we, of course, you can do longer than that. If that's cover yourself, if you're going to be feeling cold, the body temperature will drop when you do Shavasana. Just allow yourself to relax completely, relaxing every part of the body. Letting go, letting go your toes, letting go your feet, your legs, knees, thighs, hips, pelvic, sacrum, letting go your back, your lower back, entire spine, middle back, upper back, letting go of your shoulders, Neck, arms, elbows, hands, wrists, front of the body, abdomen, chest, inhaling, exhaling, deep. Slow breathing, not forceful, gentle, and yet complete breathing. Jaws letting go, relax. Facial muscles, head, forehead. Eyes, top of the head, letting go, completely relax. And the next inhalation, slightly deepen your inhalation. Move fingers and toes. Give yourself a good stretch. Leave your arms above your head. Knees to the chest. However, if you want to continue with Shavasana, you may. Otherwise, you could roll over to the right side, or to the side where your breath is predominant. 
and gently coming up this your neck last to come up so we have done the practice today with shavasana with uh, massage and shavasana please um, read the contraindications on each of uh, of the sessions of the asanas that has been given so you know um, how to practice them uh, safely continue to practice the asanas you may combine them in the way that is convenient comfortable for you and within the duration and you don't have to do so many each time you could do four up to six even two sometimes it's good enough uh, do not do more than seven asanas each time because um, more does not mean better stay safe and be happy and healthy see you next time namaskar